Hi guys, Brandon Suva with First Class Garage Door of Chicagoland. Today we're going to be talking about selecting the proper commercial door operator for your application. So I'm going to try and keep this video pretty simple and hopefully not too long. Um, real quick, the reason I wanted to do this, uh, it's all too often that we come in on estimates or service calls and we find underrated operators uh, and what would appear over overpowering the operators to make up for their low usage recommendations by the manufacturer. Um, by usage recommendations, I mean how many cycles per hour and per day these operators are meant to run. Um, real quick on cycles, one cycle of a door is from the closed position, open and back closed. So anytime we refer to, to cycle ratings or cycles, it's one complete operation of the door, so closed to open and back closed. Um, so oversizing a motor on an underrated operator will not increase your cycle rating on the operator. Uh, in all reality, uh, the higher horsepower motor is going to cost you more money in up front and in the long run, the higher horsepower motors draw more current, which means more electricity, so the operating costs are higher. Not that it's that big of a deal, but nevertheless, it is still something to consider, um, especially when it's not doing you any good. Uh, it's not extending the life of the operator. In fact, in our experience, uh, putting higher, rate, uh, higher overpowering operators uh, we found that they, they fail prematurely. Um, so yeah, we don't recommend it. And again, in our experience, it, and just the way that these are designed, it doesn't help any. So don't overpower them, just install the right one. And hopefully we can help you here to figure out the right operator for your application. So um, to get into it, uh, four things that you need to consider when choosing or selecting the proper commercial door operator. Uh, number one, what type of door do you have? Sectional, uh, sectional door with standard lift track, you're gonna be in the market for a Model T, assuming that you have enough headroom clearance for the operator to fit between either the ceiling or the nearest obstruction and the top of the door. Um, if you have a sectional overhead door with vertical lift or high lift, you're gonna be limited to a side mount type door operator. Uh, the side mounts are also for rolling steel doors or coil up doors or roll up doors, however you want to call them. Um, once you determine what style of operator you need, you're going to want to determine uh, the horsepower rating that you need. Any of the manufacturers are going to have a chart, or they should, LiftMaster does. They'll have a chart. You look up what material your door is whether it's insulated, non-insulated, or if it's a roll-up door, whatever the gauge steel is. Um, and then you're going to look up the square footage, so you multiply the width by the height, that'll give you your square footage. Once you've determined those two, it'll tell you what size, what horsepower you need for up to whatever square footage of that type of material that your door is made out of. Um, once you determine uh, motor size, horsepower, um, you're going to want to check your power requirements at the opening, so whether it's single phase or three phase power. Um, majority of the of LiftMaster's Elite Series uh, commercial door operators, um, you can get them either way, single phase or three phase, but you do need to know ahead of time. Um, they're field selectable, so the single phase is good for 115, 230, and if you get a three phase model, it's good for 208, 230, 460 volt, um, field selectable. So once you determine the power requirements, then the most important thing is usage. How many times a day, how many times an hour the door goes up and down. There's a couple of different ways you can determine this. Um, the most accurate way, if you have a logic machine, which means it has a built-in circuit board. Um, not sure on other manufacturers, but I know LiftMaster, Logic 3, Logic 4, and Logic 5 have a life of operator counter. So it counts the number of months the operator has been installed and it counts the number of cycles within those, that time period. So it's very easy um, and we don't recommend homeowners or 
end users are digging around in a commercial operator, um, this would be something to consult your service company about, your vendor. Um, but you pull the cycle count divided by the number of months that the operator has been in service according to the counter and that will give you your monthly usage. You can further break that down to daily and then hourly. Um, obviously the longer it's been in service the more accurate of a number you're going to get. So if you don't have a logic machine with a built-in counter they do make external counters. Um, whether you have one or not is another story. If you do, it may be mounted inside the electrical enclosure. It may be mounted on the outside of the electrical, electrical enclosure. Um, and you want to be careful with the external ones, um, mainly because they can be transferred from one unit to another. So you don't always know what the actual cycle count is. So the best way with these, unless you know for sure, when it was installed and how many months it's been in service. Uh, if you don't though, you need to make note of what the cycle count is and hopefully you have some time because the longer you can let it run, the more accurate your numbers are gonna be. But mark what it's at, let it run for a month at least, uh, ideally. Um, again, the longer you go, the more accurate. So take that whatever, however long you go, divide that the number of cycles by the amount of time and you can narrow it down figure out your cycle count if you have no idea and you're just shooting from the hip if you, if you want to take a, a guess at it uh, i would say on average for us in the chicagoland area 60 to 70 percent of either capacity of the garage if it's full or however many cars are in there so if you have 100 cars parking in a garage you figure 60 to 70 percent of those vehicles are using the garage every day. Um, so in a hundred of a hundred cars, 60 to 70 cars, so you have 120 to 140 cycles as 60 to 70 cars are leaving the garage, putting 60 to 70 cycles on the door. And again, when they return, so 120 to 140 cycles per day. So with these units we have up here, um, these three, well, the Model H, the Model J, the Model T, these are all rated for no more than 25 cycles per hour and no more than 80 to 90 cycles per day. So the H, the J, and the Model T would not be sufficient for the application as per standard from LiftMaster. Um, they do have optional uh, high cycle roller bearings and uh, slow door, uh, slow speed option. Uh, sorry, slow speed modification available. So if you do have higher cycle requirements than what they come standard, that's an option. Um, they also make for for extremely large doors or higher traffic doors without any modifications. Uh, the model GH as well as a model GT. The GH is a side mount. It's rated for 25 to uh, no more uh, no more than 25 cycles per hour and 90 plus cycles per day, as well as the GT. And the, again, this is a side mount. The GT is a, a trolley operator. Um, if you have higher cycle demands than that, uh, especially on an hourly basis, if you if you're in need of a trolley operator, LiftMaster makes a model APT, which is an apartment style unit. It's good for 100 plus cycles per day and it does not have an hourly rating. And there's one other unit if you have even higher cycle demands than that. It's a model HCT DCU. It's a continuous duty. You can run it as many times as you like per hour per day. It can run nonstop and it'll go 1 million plus cycles. Um, great option. Um, so just wanted to touch on too, if, when you, if you select the right operator, you should get, if you're really pushing, if you have high cycle demands, you should get like 10 years out of a, a properly placed commercial door operator. If you're talking about a warehouse door or something, uh, uh, if you have a small auto repair shop or you know, you're only opening the door five, 10, 15 times a day, one of these Model T's that's rated for 25 cycles per hour or 80 to 90 cycles per day, you're going to go well beyond that 10 year lifespan. Um, again, I'm just talking 
high traffic applications where you, you you're really using the operator to to its capacity. I don't want to say capacity, but you, you're you're using it. Um, so with that said, uh, don't think there's anything else. If I missed anything, if you guys have any questions, uh, we're happy to answer them uh, or do a video for you on it. Um, if you guys liked the video, if you found it informative, uh, if you give us a thumbs up, we appreciate it. If you're interested in seeing more, please subscribe. And as always, thank you for watching the videos. We appreciate it. And we look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thank you.